Now in clinging to this special time, we ask that we will keep our hearts and our minds on you, that the words that will come will be your words and not mine, and that they will sink into the hearts of your people, and your special message carry them to Our uh, scripture reading today comes from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter one, and then we will read verse one up into verse nine. We'll give a few moments for those who are still turning the pages. The passage reads as follows. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' his minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Go over this Jordan, thou, and all this people, unto the land which I give to them, even the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide an inheritance for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn from it, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wherever this thou shalt go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt be have, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Let us uh, understand that as we're going to open uh, our service with the number nine. Oh, 
Yes, we have some therapists or so. And before I read them, I just want to remind uh, the congregation and people on Zoom that on, uh, on, on the WhatsApp group, which WhatsApp group, there is a form, there's the always form. Uh, with the, um, what's the word? Please, if it's possible, to open it and fill it in so that the following Sabbath. We can, can have a very good So we're going to very good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, yes. Uh, so we, we've got some very good yeah. Um From Jeremy, pray for Christians around the world. Facing persecution or follow Jesus as a said. Uh, from Sistancia, uh, private prayer request. We need to pray for Sistancia. And uh, another prayer is 
to be faithful to tell you that remember this is a very important because uh some, sometimes we tend to faithful and this is an expression for us our state through the living and that so we need the strength we need the strength for us to be to keep or to keep this place of the let us all you down as we go to <clears throat> our dear heavenly father what a wonderful moment that you have given us to come before the throne of mercy even though, Lord, we don't deserve it, but Lord, you accepted, you accepted us to be uh, in this place, or place, a house of worship. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you showed us a love, a love that surpasses human understanding. Lord, as we have sung the song, you promised us to take care of us, no matter what this may be facing, you will take care of us. That's Lord, that's why Lord, we come before you. Know that if though we are Sinners, we don't deserve to be in such holy place. Lord, you accept us, and you understand us, our weakness. Lord, all we pray is that as we believe in Jesus Christ's blood, we pray that you may please us. With this blood shed on Calvary. Help us, Lord, to be to remain faithful. Help us to be in the high standard of obeying your command. Lord, we have come with some requests. This is the Mary, the Mary. Uh, sister and uh, brother, you have been to them during the sickness that they went through. And Lord, we are so thankful that you showed your hand to them and to the family. And we keep on praying that, Lord, you may continue to be with them and to bring healing to them. Lord, we also want to pray for our fellow brothers in some corners of this world who are facing the persecution or having followed you for being choosing you as a, a savior. What you want to pray for them is not to stop this persecution because it will happen. It will happen for many. All you want to pray for them is to keep this strength. Never be discouraged. Keep on witnessing you. Whatever hard persecution they may be facing, Lord, we pray for them, wherever they are. And also, Lord, every believer, wherever he is, 
loading pressure to the reverse this power. To continue to witness in whatever situation you may be. <clears throat> Lord, what to bring you into your hands, your sister, and them. You know all challenges that she's facing. Lord, hear our prayer for them. Lord, also we want to ask for the encouragement to remain faithful with regard to returning dance and offering. This is the only way that we express our faith to you. Lord, help us to keep this uh, task that one thing must be yours is not for us. And we pray to continue to advance your work in this world because, Lord, we need to go home. We need to go to the final home when the work is done. We pray that you may continue to encourage each one of us, all believers all around the world, to continue to do what you want us to do so that we can finish this work. Also, Lord, we want to pray for Sister Lydia Record, whom you gave the message to bring to one day prayer. I will let him hug behind you and give her words to say. And help us also, Lord, to open our hearts so that we can give the message. And not only hear the message, but also to apply the message that you have given to us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Morning and I decided to find for our offering and fire to the king and the book of the passage of scripture, second Corinthians 9 to 13 to 15. Many will be honored to God when they see how humbly you obey him. And how faithfully you confess the gospel of Christ. And will thank him for your liberal contribution to their need and to the general good. Thanks be to God for his gift to God's word. May the Lord add a blessing. Now ask the deacon and
Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Yes, I'm very happy to hear your voice and uh, to show that you are happy being in God's house. <coughs> we are privileged to be in the um, uh, house of worship. And uh, it is a great privilege for all of us. It is a great privilege for all of us, and I think we have experienced so uh, many times the time where we could not come here. I think it was not so nice to everyone. And why, when we found ourselves in worship, in the house of worship, with singing together, it is wonderful. And we, we thank God for that. So, making it for us to be here. I'm given this time to welcome everyone in uh, uh, this uh, divine service. Uh, it is as usually I'm glad to welcome the regular members, but also today we are so happy to see many visitors coming to one uh, I do have some names here. But uh, those ones I did not get to know, please be welcome. Be welcome. And we pray that the Holy Spirit may be with you and we um, make you enjoy the, the service. The name of, of Brian Shackton, can you please raise your hand? Next to the pastor, we are happy to see you. Yeah, the verse tier three. We don't want to keep you in visitor, we want to keep you to tier three as we get to share that. Well. And um, we do have also uh, Santa Ricot. Uh, Santa Ricot is a uh, is the man, is the man who won our presenting letter. And uh, Shalom, Shalom, can you please raise her? Oh, it's a young girl. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we are so happy. Uh, she looks shy, but don't feel, feel, uh, feel free. We are in God's place, we are in God's, uh, in God's house, we are in the Father's house. Um, yes, I, I, I do not mention their name because they are no longer visitors. <laughs> they are no longer visitors. We always have to see you. We are there in the home now. And you go to welcome other visitors. So you are no longer visitors. I see new face in the next, the next uh, branch. Is it a new face? 
Sometimes when people put mask, it goes in the face. <laughs> yeah. Does it for that? But if you in the visitors, please can you raise your hands so that you can welcome you? Raise your hands, new faces. Is there anyone by chat? Yeah, I don't see anyone. Uh, I'm happy also to welcome uh, um, Her Majesty. Her Majesty. It's been quite a long time. Uh, we are so glad to see you. Okay. So everyone feel free as we're going to um, worship together to, to get uh, rid of us. And uh, at the last, I want to welcome Sister Lydia Ricot. She came along with Mom Santa Ricot. We are happy, so happy to see you. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you. Uh, thank you, Sister Lydia, for accepting our invitation. Sister Lydia is, uh, is uh, doing an internship. She's doing an internship uh, and she's working with the pastor, name of our pastor. So we are so happy to see her with us. I think it's the first time, but it must not be the last time. Yeah. Okay. So I want to give her, uh, before she stands, we do have uh, a new number. I'm going to, to sing. Um, oh, okay, good. <laughs> yes, so before she stands, we're going to let the Holy Spirit come in through this song. Listen. sermon today is the source of courage. Who of you have ever been confronted by a situation that just seemed too difficult to face? Have you ever found yourself in a place where 
you didn't know how you would be able to face the future. Maybe you feel that what God is asking you is just too much to bear. That the task he has set for you is just too great. Today we will look at the story of someone who must have felt this way. We will turn again to our scripture reading in chapter one and just go through it again. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my minister, is said, Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the soil of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coat. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wherever thou go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Here we find Joshua facing an enormous obstacle. I can imagine that he must have felt completely overwhelmed. Moses had just died. This left Joshua with the enormous responsibility of leading the sizable nation of Israel all by himself. After this point, his life had been a series of highs and lows. Joshua was one of only two Israelites that was still alive who had experienced the painful reality of living in Egypt. The rest of the original Israelites had died in the desert during their 40 years of wandering. He had suffered the slavery of Egypt, but then witnessed firsthand the mighty power of God as he brought the plagues upon Egypt and the Pharaoh. He saw God's providence in the cloud and the pillar of fire, in the manna that was found on the ground every morning. He journeyed through the desert for 40 years, witnessing how the nation of Israel drifted between devotion to God and murmuring against him. After Moses took him under his wing, he experienced firsthand how Moses struggled with these people. He understood just how trying the nation could be. Despite his many years of service alongside Moses, one could imagine the nervousness that he felt, the prospect of leading this unruly nation into Canaan. He could not lean upon Moses, his mentor, for strength anymore. Where would he find the courage for this man of God? Have you ever experienced the loss of a loved one? 
perhaps a relationship with a close friend that has gone sour, the fond memories that you made with them, the jokes that you made together, and the helpful hand that they always provided. These memories now do nothing more than burn a hole in your heart. Joshua was still grieving Moses' death. For so many years they had worked together and they had become close friends. Together they looked forward to life in the promised land. I can imagine that when Moses felt discouraged, Joshua would once again tell him stories about his brief visit to Canaan. And this would once again give them the power and the courage to carry on with the work. Were you also looking forward to the wonderful times that you would spend with your lost loved one that you now have to enjoy on your own? Have you wondered how on earth you are going to face life on your own after the death of a spouse? Have you faced challenges in life? Wishing for the guidance of your parent or mentor who is no longer with us. Take courage, my friend. For just as God assured Joshua a victory over the inhabitants of Canaan, Christ assures us that He will be with us, whatever we face. In Psalm 23, verse 4, Psalmist says, Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God has never promised that we will not walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But we can take courage because the shepherd walks before us. He will guide us safely once again to the green pastures where we can find rest. However, before Joshua could rest in the green pastures of the promised land of Canaan, he had to face his shadow of death. The Jordan River was before him. As it was the harvest season, the Jordan River was flooding at banks. The river was not as the domesticated kitten that it used to be, but it had grown into a fierce, roaring lion. This was not the only challenge that Joshua would have to face. For on the other side of the Jordan, in the Promised Land, they would have to battle the inhabitants. And the inhabitancy would not come easy. He would need to lead the nation of Israel into battle. But, as we know, they weren't always the most faithful people. This Israel had turned their back on God and Moses so many times, and they rejected Joshua and Cain's message about the beautiful land of Canaan that they could find with God's help. How would he be able to tame this unruly and rebellious nation? I can imagine the enormity of the task weighing on his shoulders. He would have to face this challenge on his own without Moses' support or guidance. He felt alone. The brave warrior's courage was starting to fail him. The promised land was within sight, just over the raging river, so close and yet so far. Even the coveted promised land could not bring an end to the trials. Here at the bank of the Jordan, God assured Joshua of victory over the inhabitants. Here, God re-established his covenant with Joshua, but promised that none of the nations would be able to stand before him if he would take God with him. Despite God's assurance, Joshua, of the victory over the enemies, this does not mean that it would simply be plain saving there would still be battles to come. In the same way, God assures us that he has won the war. He has conquered death and sin. But this does not mean that we will not struggle with sin in our day-to-day -day lives, or that we will never feel the distress 
of death. But God just shows us that he has power over death and life. Christ has conquered death and sin, and he will see you through. Three times in this passage, God commands Joshua to be strong and courageous. Now, at first glance, this does not appear very logical. Simply telling someone to be strong doesn't make them strong. If you were facing one of your greatest fears, would simply telling you be courageous give you courage? I know it certainly wouldn't help me. I have a very strong fear of heights, and no amount of telling me to get over it is going to make me jump down from a height or go down a zip line. As a small child, I was afraid of the dark, as I'm sure most children are at some stage in their life. And no matter what the parent says to that child, they will remain scared. No matter how many times the parent checks under the bed for the monsters, or tells them that there's nothing in the closet, the child will remain frightened. So what then was the point of these commands that God gave to Joshua? What difference could these simple words make? How could Joshua be courageous when he was alone and despairing? But we see that God's promises provide the answer. They form the basis for his mandate and are declared before the commands are given. The reason that Joshua could be strong and courageous is because God promised that he would be with him. God assured him that just as he was with Moses, he would also be with him. The reassurance of God's presence and guidance is what made it possible for Joshua to be strong and courageous. Just like the parent's presence can calm a child who's fearing the dark, only God's presence can be the source of our courage. In Deuteronomy 31, we find Moses presenting his last speech to the Israelites and his words of encouragement to Joshua. Moses commands both the nation of Israel and Joshua to be strong and courageous. Verse 8, uh, verse 6 to 8 reads as follows Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of him. For the Lord thy God, he is he, it's that of go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Then Moses called to Joshua and said to him in the sight of all of Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you will go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you will give it to them as an inheritance. And the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not desert you nor abandon you. Do not fear and do not be dismayed. God uses these words of Moses to encourage Joshua. He uses the very same words that Joshua's close friend had spoken to him not very long ago. God confirms that what Moses had said is true. The covenant that God had made with Moses, he now confirms and makes with Joshua as well. It is not due to Joshua's own merit that he could be strong or have courage, nor was it because of the words that Moses had spoken to him, but it was God's strength and God's courage that worked in Joshua. If he had to trust on himself, Joshua would likely not have had much strength or courage. He would likely never have been able to cross Jordan. He would likely never have had the strength to lead the nation of Israel. And he would probably not have the courage to lead Israel into battle against the Canaanites. But God, but God would give him both. God would be his source of courage. Today, brothers and sisters, God commands us to be strong and courageous. 
He has never promised us that life will be easy. Quite the contrary. Christ warns us that following him will lead to hardships, oftentimes persecution. The road that lies ahead of us may be difficult, and we may need to face it without our close friends, families, and mentors. But God has promised that he will be with us. In John 14, verse 25, 27, God tells us, These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with me. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God sent the Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us. God himself wanted so badly to be with you that he not only sent Jesus to die for your sins and make it possible for you to live with him eternally, but he gives us the Holy Spirit guide us every step of the way. I do not know what battles you're facing today. It may not be as significant as the manner's task that Joshua was faced with, but I'm sure we all have battles nonetheless. Some may be struggling to pay their rent. Others may be wondering what they're going to feed their families. Others may be grieving the death of a loved one. Some are struggling with the burden of sin. Some are struggling with their own health. Some are struggling with their relationship with the Lord. Whatever it may be, I have good news. God has promised that you do not need to face it alone. He will be with you. God will provide the courage and the strength that you need to face each and every battle. God will walk with you through the shadow of the valley of death and through the Jordan River. There's an old song that goes, God has not promised, skies always blue, flowers strewn pathways all our lives through. God has not promised, sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. God has not promised, we shall not know. Toil and temptation, trouble and woe. He has not told us, we shall not bear. Many a burden, many a care. But God has promised, strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for the trials, up from above. Unfailing sympathy, undying love. God promised Joshua that he would carry him into the promised land. It was still the promise that gave Joshua the courage to face the river and the strength to lead Israel. It is God's promise of Christ's second coming that gives us the hope and strength to face our daily battles and to push through whatever may come. All we have to do is have faith in and obedience to Jesus, our blessed hope. God not only gives a promise, but also a command and a warning. God wanted to bless Joshua, but Joshua's obedience was imperative for him to be able to accept this blessing. Jesus will be with us in times when we feel overwhelmed, and unsure. In the same way that God assured Joshua, he assures us of his victory and promises us an eternal life in the promised land, much greater than the earthly one across the Jordan. However, just as Joshua could not cross the Jordan on his own, these things are unattainable on our own merit. It is both God's strength and courage and Christ's victory over the enemy of 
by a sacrificial death on the cross. There is nothing we can do to add to this offer. All that Christ requires of us is a willing and obedient spirit. When we step out in faith, we might be surprised to see that the Jordan parts before us. Brothers and sisters, let us make it our creed to live in the courage and strength of the Lord, knowing that he is faithful to all his promises. We may face difficulty in this life, but God has promised that he will not leave us orphans. So, let us be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither is made. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wherever thou comes. Amen. I uh, will now sing our closing hymn. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we know we can have courage and strength because you are with us. Lord, we know that you have won the victory already and that these battles are just obscure in the face of the great victory that you have won. Lord, keep your hand over us. Guide us through this, guide us through the valley of the shadow of death. 
be with us every step of the way as you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, Lord. 